And one way that, one way that we can really disrupt ecosystems and cultures is with biosynthetic ingredients. Years ago, in 1980s, they wanted to save money creating L-tryptophan in Japan. Isn't this an uplifting lecture so far? We'll get to the good stuff. We'll get to the good stuff. They wanted to create L-tryptophan, a, a food supplement, cheaper. So they genetically engineered bacteria in fermentation vats starting, I think, in 1984 in Japan and started selling it to unsuspecting U.S. consumers. And then every few years or so, they would add more genes into the bacteria to make it even more effective at producing things so you wouldn't have to mix things into it afterwards because the bacteria will create it itself. They were not aware that this L-tryptophan had some contaminants, almost certainly as a result of the process of genetic engineering. Four, five, or six contaminants from 0.1% to 0.01%. The L-tryptophan still passed the U.S. pharmaceutical standard for purity. It was 98.5% pure. And it started to kill people. It killed about 100 Americans and caused 5 to 10,000 to fall sick. Horrible disease. Horrible disease. Eosinophilia myalgia syndrome. It was unique. It was severe. And it came on quickly. They found it and were able to take the tryptophan off the market. The FDA never acknowledged that it was only the genetically engineered version. They took all tryptophan off the market, which allowed for more Prozac sales, and claimed that it was the L-tryptophan doing it, even though it was only one company's version. And the other, company, other company's versions never created the same disease. And when they testified before Congress, they hid that evidence. They never mentioned genetic engineering. But somehow the process of genetic engineering created these side effects. Now there's many ways that it could occur. The tryptophan was toxic to the bacteria that was creating it. So the bacteria might have adjusted and created something. When you overproduce one thing, you might underproduce something else. There's all sorts of things that can go wrong. And now, we're genetically engineering other things using little microorganisms as factories. In 1980, 1995, they genetically engineered yeast and added just more of yeast's own genes in it and ended up creating 40 to 200 fold increase in a carcinogen or a potential carcinogen. And they warned, be careful about genetically engineering yeast because it might create toxins. Now a company called Impossible Burger is using yeast and put in a gene from soybean roots to create something that looks like blood, leg hemoglobin. Never been part of the human food supply. Created from genetically engineered yeast. What could go wrong? And while they created that, guess what? in the soupy fermented mixture that they just stuff into the burger, there's 46 other, G, other proteins that have never been far, part of the human food, food supply and never been characterized for safety. So about almost 30% of the stuff that they put in is these sludge that's not the leg hemoglobin. And in the leg hemoglobin protein itself is uncharacterized, unknown for its safety impacts. Add that with some Roundup Ready soy, which is sprayed with Roundup, and there's your Impossible Burger designed to save the planet. Friends don't let friends eat the Impossible Burger. Right? Yeah. Now that you hear that. There is a group that's now collecting information from people who got sick after eating the Impossible Burger. And I'm looking forward to publicizing their results. But this is just one use of what we call synthetic biology. There's groups like this lab of Evolva in Switzerland. There's all sorts of things. There's vanilla, there's sandalwood, stevia, saffron, opioids, caffeine. I mean, all these things are being created. The taste of it or the replacements for it, some of the vanilla on the market right now is from genetically engineered micro factories. And of course, not only 
does that create a potential side effect? But what does it do to the people who've created the infrastructure of harvesting the vanilla over decades and centuries? It might be plowed over and they might place genetically engineered soy there instead. So we can be displacing cultures. And when we understand the role of the so-called active ingredient versus the whole, uh, the whole ecosystem within an herb or a plant, we realize this whole concept of an active ingredient is a fraud. But if they just produce the active ingredient and don't, incre and don't allow all those other aspects or those compounds to work together, it may never get the healing properties that we haven't yet even discovered. So before we discovered the fact that broccoli sprouts have all these incredible things, it's possible they could have changed it so it never actually produced those and we would never know. And they want to genetically engineer the active ingredient of Ayurvedic herbs. You can go to SynBioWatch to get an ingredient database as to what they're creating, SynBioWatch.